Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. As you can see, you're joined by Jack and Tierra this time, and a bit more of a sit down style sort of video, which should be interesting for you guys. But essentially, what we'll be running through today is our blood test results. Yeah, so we did get some blood drawn this past 2020 slash 2021 prep, and we had some test results at the very beginning of prep, which was around October 2020. We got our final test done in May 2021, and we really got blood drawn for two main reasons. Mm. First one was just to ensure that we are nice and healthy, and that's generally why we recommend that people do get bloods taken at least every six months or so, just to ensure that they don't have any essential nutrient deficiencies. Mm. And the second reason was really just out of curiosity. Yeah. You know, like we just went through a extended dieting period and we wanted to see if or how our physiology changes when we do a comp prep. Mm. Definitely. And not just that, but also in future comp preps, like we might change our protocols and we might that might reflect in the blood test. So like, for example, I let's just say I try a keto comp prep next time and uh, that might suddenly raise my testosterone <laughs> and uh, due to the higher fat approach. And also I've been told by some people in the YouTube comments, but I won't delve too much into that. But essentially we know that bodybuilding is a subjective sport in that you get voted for or against by the judges who judge your physique. However, it can be useful throughout the comp prep to use a, me uh, a multitude or a combination of objective measures such as blood tests and subjective measures such as progress photos. Yeah, so subjectivity is obviously based on opinions, it's based on your feelings, it's based on emotions, and this is a subjective sport. You are yeah. ultimately judged on how you look. But definitely to achieve that desired outcome, you do need to use objective measures during your competition phase. And objective measures really keep you in the know. And they're generally numerical. So mm -hmm. things that might be objectively measured during your comp prep would be your nutrition, the total amount of calories and macronutrients that you're taking in, your scale weight changes, the weights and the volume that you're completing in the gym, your skin folds, your girth measurements, and yeah, blood test results if you get those taken as well. And, you know, subjectively, people are gonna have their opinions on scale weight, but I think objectively, you can't deny that number that stares right back at you. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the same goes with the blood test. If, if you get a blood test and you're iron deficient, you get another blood test and you're iron deficient, safe to say, you're iron deficient. Yeah, so. get amongst the kangaroo. <laughs> So essentially what we'll be doing for the rest of the video is breaking down the nice juicy results. We're going to ignore a lot of the, the fluff, so to speak, but definitely digging into the more nutrient associated ones and of course the hormone associated ones. Yeah. So like I said at the start, we're comparing these from October, 2020 to May, 2021. And mm. I guess the first thing that we'll just take off is that when you get a blood test, Generally, you know, they do your standard full blood panel. So they're going to test things like your red blood cells, your white blood cells, your hematocrit levels, mm -hmm. liver enzymes. They're going to test things like triglyceride levels, cholesterol, blood, HDL. yeah, HDL, uh, electrolytes. Mm -hmm. Good news is, is that both pre and post, all of these things were in range for both of us, which yeah kind of backs up that we didn't implement any bro science, we didn't dehydrate ourselves, we didn't mess around with electrolytes, and definitely didn't go on a keto diet to no. raise those <laughs> blood triglycerides. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. So yeah, that all of that was good, and which is excellent. And I will just say that my before results were taken after a mini cut as well. So I'd actually lost, I think, about seven kilos before my first blood test. I did actually get a blood test midway through, which I'm not going to document today purely because I basically did a whole video on that which you can check out in, in one of our previous vids. But uh, essentially let's kickstart this off. Great. Alright, so we just covered, you know, basic, the full blood panel. All of those great things were in range. Let's start with perhaps B12. So B12, Jack, how was your B12? Yeah, so my B12, I'm just looking at my results on the screen here. I haven't memorized the numbers. but. It started at 368 p mole per liter 
and ended at 370. And the reference weight range is 162 to 811. So my B12 went up slightly, which isn't much of a surprise because I was eating a lot of yogurt and cottage cheese. <laughs> mm. Yeah, well, man, I'm in your same boat as well. Mine actually went slightly up too. I've got the same reference range as you. And, you know, reference ranges, they change sometimes depending on mm. your age and then also your gender. But yeah. it seems like B12, you know, I both need the same amount. Mm. I think my B12 might even be higher than yours. Mine increased from 443 up to 496. So. Well, I, they say quality, not quantity. I think the quality <laughs> of my B12. <laughs> I think you just need to get on my level. <laughs> now let's move on to vitamin D3. So Jack, how much sunlight exposure did you get? So interestingly, at the start of prep, my, I was slightly, well, just under the reference range for vitamin D, which is the reference is basically anything above 49. And I was 46 to begin with, but I ended at 62 nanomoles per liter, which is which is great. And I did supplement, supplement with vitamin D3 for a bit. And I also actually take vitamin D3 fortified eggs, mm. which, uh, which undoubtedly helps as well. Yeah, I was really surprised that you were deficient in that nutrient too, mm. because we walk to the gym every single session yeah. in the sunlight, and we live here in sunny Brisbane, Australia. So. Yeah, I was surprised too, but uh, I think yours, uh, un unsurprisingly, is okay. <laughs> I didn't realize that this video was going to turn into a blood competition. <laughs> But my vitamin D, it was 106 to begin with. And again, the reference, it just needs to be over 49 nanomoles per liter. So I was over double, which is pretty cool. Even the doctor was like, your vitamin D is really high. And I'm like, I love that sunshine. But it did decrease down to 93. I guess obviously we went through the summer and then by May coming around, it was getting pretty cold so mm. we're still up there but not quite as high yeah and i i guess we have to factor in that certain fluctuations is normal like it's not going to be the same like just because tiara was 93 she could have tested it an hour later and maybe it would have been 106 again mm. so we we need to bear that in mind i think but next on the list is ferritin and this is a measure of iron status and this is one where our reference ranges will definitely be different because Tiara has higher requirements being female. But essentially the reference range for me is 30 to 320 micrograms per liter. And I started at 127 in October and I ended at 275. So a very, very decent increase on my end by over double, which is really good. And I think I can testify that too just Eat, I literally ate kangaroo, which is a form of red, red meat, high in iron uh, throughout the whole prep. And maybe potentially to do with lower carbohydrates in general, but then again, I had more fiber. Mm -hmm. So we know that fiber can interfere with your red, sorry, with your iron absorption. Mm -hmm. So who knows, but it's higher, which what counts. Yeah, take that as a win. Yeah. And what about yours? Yeah, so for females, because we do menstruate, you know, like daily iron requirements are almost double that of a male's. So the reference range for me is between 25 to 290. Now, in the beginning of prep, I was actually very close toward the lower end here. I was at 28, so just scraping by. But just like Jack, I hopped on that kangaroo train and I had around 120 grams of raw kangaroo mints, give or take, pretty much every single night of prep and almost doubled my level. So that went right up to 48. And we've definitely gotten a lot of our team and our clients on yeah. Team TBD on the kangaroo train. So pick yeah. that up. Yeah, I mean, if you like, to, to us, it just tastes the same as low fat mm -hmm. beef mints, but some people say it tastes a bit gamey, but I mean, yeah, each to their own. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, like, you know, we're all competitive here, so we all like a game. We all like to play. But uh, kangaroo's awesome. We even did a post on that on TBD, and mm. it's actually higher in iron than lean beef mints. Yeah. And it's lower also in significantly lower in fat. Yeah. Cool. So we do have two main hormone-related results here. And I something that I definitely want to do in the future is just get a more complete breakdown, especially for myself, because as you'll see there, it's not exactly favorable on my end. And I would like to potentially break it down a bit further to investigate where in particular I could, um, where in particular my deficits lie, like rather than just 
kind of blanket stating testosterone, which is still useful, but I, I didn't really need a blood test to say that I was low on testosterone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so essentially we will start off with testosterone first. And the reference range uh, for this for me is 10 to 33 nanomoles per liter. And I started in October at 11. And as you guys can probably tell, like that, if the reference range starts at 10 and I'm 11, I'm not exactly high to begin with. Mm -hmm. And that's just, uh, could be a, a variety of factors, but I think predominantly it's just genetic. Mm -hmm. And I ended at 1.1. So about one tenth what the reference range starts at which is uh, very cool, so to speak. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm not surprised, but the goal now is to obviously bring that up. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't agree more. It'll be really interesting to actually speak to an endocrinologist in the future and get mm. a much more comprehensive panel for your different hormones. Because as we know, a lot of these things are linked and you're a very muscly guy. So mm. it's not just coming down to your testosterone levels. There's yeah. a lot of other things that are contributing to your skeletal muscle mm. mass. Yeah. And I think what interests me is that ultimately there's no doubt that testosterone is important for you maintain your performance in the gym and your quality of life. So potentially in future preps, if there is a way I can uh, maximize my retention of testosterone, mm. then maybe I should try and do some research into that. But yeah. it'll just be something interesting to, to look at on the side. It would be interesting to see even if it was linked in with your vitamin D, because mm. as we know, vitamin D is an essential nutrient and they some people consider it an actual hormone and that's directly linked with testosterone production so because that was slightly low at the beginning maybe that's linked in but mm, could be who knows but yeah yeah we'll uh, have to do some research but what about your testosterone so my testosterone is <laughs> definitely lower than yours but that's definitely <laughs> not by much <laughs> that's that's normal uh the reference range for me is between 0 0.4 to 2.1 nanomoles per liter I started off at 0 0.7 and then I ended at 0 0.4. So still not necessarily in that lower bracket, like deficiency level, but um, I was right on the brink there, man, at 0 0.4 when that's the cutoff of the range. Mm. Mm. Well, at least yours is still in range. <laughs> yeah, thank God. Hold it in there. And again, like I've been reversing since then. So yeah, know, hopefully future tests, it's really boosted up. Mm. Pun intended. <laughs> So the final one is thyroid stimulating hormone, which we know is incredibly important for your metabolism. Mm -hmm. And essentially the reference range for this for me is 0 0.5 to 4. It looks like yours is the, the same as well, which mm -hmm. is good. And basically mine started at 3.3 and ended at 1.9. So a slight decrease, which is kind of to be expected with eight months of dieting. Yeah, without a doubt. Well, yeah. that's really interesting because mine almost started the same as you. Mine started at three and it decreased down to 1.7. So mm. you and I, we almost got the same amount of TSH <laughs> in us. <laughs> yeah, cool. Well, that I guess that kind of wraps up the results. Yeah, so pretty much based on these results, based on these objective measures, we really wanted to be able to allow this to guide us during our reverse dieting process. So Jack, touch on that. Yeah, so essentially because I know from the blood work and, and subjective measures as well that I'm in a fairly compromised position at, at the body fat in which I got the test, which is no surprise. So I know that I need to be fairly aggressive with my weight gain in a controlled manner in order to uh, be, like normalize things back to homeostasis and equilibrium. So that basically meant that I would be fairly aggressive with my nutrition, bring my body weight up as I have been doing and uh, allow for some body fat gain, which will hopefully regulate those markers as seen on the blood tests and the more subjective measures like libido, energy levels throughout the day, training performance, training enjoyment, all those sorts of ones. So my macros at the moment are 275 protein, uh, five, 25 to 550 carb and uh, 80 grams of fat. And that's basically bringing my body weight up. I started off more aggressively at around a kilo per week and I'm slowing down to around half a kilo per week at the moment and feeling a lot better for it. Yeah, that's awesome. So we are three weeks post-show as of today. Yeah. So what was actually your stage weight and what body weight are you averaging now? Yeah, so I started at about 75.7 and this morning I weighed in at 
3.8, I believe. Mm -hmm. So just over three kilos of weight gain, which I'm very happy with. And I'll probably continue about half a kilo per week until I reach 80 kilos mm -hmm. and then slow that down from there. I definitely, I'm, my energy levels are really good now. Um, we'll compare the prep. They're still not normal, but I think it, the, the biggest thing at the moment is actually my biomechanics in the gym. Like I'm still struggling a bit with feeling strong in my pushing movements and my heavy hip hinging. So I just need to gain a bit more fat around the waist and the ass um, to facilitate that. <laughs> There's just something about having more body fat on you that you are just a beast when it comes mm. to benching and hip thrusting. <laughs> yeah, and RDLs for me as well. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, what's your plan at the moment? Yeah. So. Luckily, like testosterone was the only thing there that was on the very lower end of the range. But like I said, it's just hanging in there. So I'm not quite in that lower bracket deficiency area. But the good news is, is that uh, none of my physiological markers were out of range. So technically, according to the blood test, I'm still in pretty good health. And that makes sense. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I did my absolute best to take care of myself this past prep, but also I am a fitness competitor and I got to the required level of leanness for my category, but I'm not a bodybuilder. You know, I did not get striated glutes, thank God, <laughs> but I definitely got marked down for that. Uh, so, <laughs> so the way that that's guiding me is that I'm not being as aggressive with my rate of gain compared to Jack, which I think yeah. is totally appropriate. So my lowest weight that I hit during prep was 57.2 kilograms that I was on stage around 58 kilograms. And since prep ended, my scale weight has incrementally increased up to 59.7 kilograms. So I'm staying around two kilograms around mm. that mark above my stage weight right now. And I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling a lot more energetic. I'm feeling strong in the gym. Just quality of life is good. Sleep is really good. Appetite levels are good. So that's helping to guide me. And what I'm aiming for is around half a kilogram per month of weight gain from here on out. And I'm just taking a morning fasted body weight on the scale every single morning. I'm taking my weekly average and making sure that that's inching up week by week by week. Mm -hmm. And right now my macros are at 350 carb, 40 fat and 200 protein. I just love protein, man. <laughs> I don't blame you. Not gonna apologize for it. So those are my macros right now. And once my weight stalls, I will do 100 calorie increases. Definitely going to keep protein the same, but those 100 calorie increases will predominantly come from carbohydrates. So around 25 grams of carbs, but as meals become less palatable, I'll slowly start to inch up fats. But man, when it comes to food, I'm definitely a carb girl. Mm. And I think it's important to mention that in the moderate to long term, we need to associate weight gain with performance increases as well. So we can't just gain weight for the sake of it without any benefit to performance because that is basically an indicator that you aren't really putting on muscle mass. So yeah, you always want your scale weights to correlate with PVs in the gym ultimately mm. and being able to lift more weight for more reps. And we're still going to continue to take progress photos and everything like that. Yeah. So that pretty much wraps up this video guys. Like, we are definitely going to get more blood tests down the line to document the recovery process a bit more. I think there's only so much or so long we can stretch out this recovery period for social media though. So like we can't be doing a recovery video in six months time. So we'll probably get a blood test at like eight weeks afterwards, which is in another five weeks and probably call, call it quits then in terms of the recovery phase. Uh, well, I hope so. Hope that we're recovered before then regardless. And then we can officially just be in deep into our improvement phase. Yeah, that's right. But if you enjoyed this video, guys, please leave a like, uh, leave a comment, share it, subscribe. And uh, if you enjoy this sort of sit down video, let us know. Otherwise, one of us or both of us will catch you in the next one.